the Civic EX with 35,000 miles. Now the Civic was originally introduced in 1972, which would eventually rejuvenate the entirety of the Honda brand, followed by the Accord in 1976. Now since that 1972 model year, there has been 10 generations of the Civic, this being the first year of the 10th generation, which was introduced in 2016. Now, the Honda Civic has exploded in sales, becoming one of these most notoriously reliable sedans and compact cars in the entire world. Sales-wise in America, the best-selling year since the year 2000 was 337,000 sales in 2017, which is a colossal number when you compare it to other vehicles, and the lowest being a little over 221,000, I believe in the late 2000, which is still a very impressive number. Now, this Civic in specific has a 2-liter 4-cylinder with 158 horsepower, and other high trims of the Civic include the SI and Type R. Now, in this uh, video, I'll be taking around the Civic, showing off its nice, luxurious, and reliable features, taking around it, driving it, and seeing where it falls in the levelless valuation sale. Stay tuned. Starting with the exterior styling of the Civic, you can see I really enjoy the way that Honda um, incorporated the grille in this vehicle. Unlike a typical sedan or vehicle that have a normal grille with a drop down and a logo, Honda almost layers the grille on the Civic. You have a sweeping bar for the hood and then you kind of have another bar right here above the logo and then a lower plastic bar beneath that. And now moving to the side, as you can see, the headlight design on the Civic is pretty cool as well. It's almost like a non-complete square on the left side and then a very chiseled looking bulb right here with a very big like almost crystal like circle on the right of it a very simple design to make a very practical and economical car look sporty and tough and continuing with the overall exterior of the Civic um, one thing I want to point out the entirety of the Civic is a very like futuristic and like chiseled flowing look to it nothing is very like like square or boxy it all has a very linear look and this uh, design continues with the wheels, as you can see. They kind of flow in a pattern, almost like a storm or a vortex look. But it kind of incorporates that same design throughout the entirety of the car to the detail of the hubcaps and wheels itself. And moving to the rear exterior design of the Honda Civic, I want to just kind of touch on these rear taillights. And if you look at them from a side view, you can almost look at them as an old telephone, like one of those rotary phones, or even a lobster claw. But it is a very cool design and makes it just look a very sporty vehicle, as I previously mentioned. And one other interesting little touch I want to mention on this Civic. Honda has used this same, like, techno font for the past multiple editions of the Civic. I remember my parents' Civic hatchback in the 90s even had the same font as well. So Honda keeps the tradition very standard as all vehicles. As this success has continued throughout the entirety of its vehicle history, Honda keeps it the same throughout. So moving to the interior of the Honda Civic, uh, I want to start with the overall steering wheel design. Um, if you move to the top of the steering wheel on the bottom of it, it has this almost like dotted look, almost like with the texture of um, like a golf ball or like something of like a similar nature to it. And you continue out with this kind of very 
almost like like a like an alligator skin like kind of feel like a very like rigid scaly uh, plasticky material around it. it was very it has a very sporty but like domineering feeling when you're holding the wheel of this thing and then continuing with the wheel overall you have your honda logo right there to the left of that you have your various bluetooth and phone connection settings and to the right you have your various cruise control settings as well um, one cool little touch though on the uh, civics design as far as the buttons go on the steering wheel when you go to move up the volume as you can see in the center uh, instrument cluster all you have to do is glide your finger up and down the knob you don't have to actually physically press the button if you just keep moving your finger up or down on the um little handle dial you have right here it'll go up almost instantly for you which is very adaptive for your touch which is a very nice quality on a very practical and low price vehicle so continuing with the civics interior i want to move to the gauge cluster screens as you can see right here one cool design that I want to point out, as you can see, both on the temperature and gas gauge, the way Honda indicates the level of heating or cooling or the temperature of your vehicle, there are a plethora of tiny little like dotted uh, lines you can see here. And then the one dot that is lined in the neon blue coloring displays the level of temperature in your Civic. And the same thing goes on your gas gauge as well, it's depending on how full or empty you are. There's one single bar of blue light, which indicates the level, which is a very cool touch on Honda's design. And um, the overall look of these um, kind of measurement panels right here, it reminds me of the back of the Civic as well as the styling. It has that kind of chiseled, rugged look on the back of the Civic. And as you can see here, your speedometer screen as well. It is all one giant screen. As I previously mentioned, you, as you can see the volume knobs. It's very adaptive and very futuristic look to this car. So continuing with the interior of the Civic, I'm now going to move to the infotainment system area of the vehicle. As you can see here, Honda integrates the screen very nicely. Um, opposed it to the Toyota Corolla that I reviewed, Toyota kind of just stuck it on the roof of the center console and kind of just tacked it there kind of lazily. I like how Honda kind of integrates into the center console of the vehicle and makes it flow throughout the interior, which is very nice. Now, moving to the infotainment system though, as you can see here, it is a very generic infotainment system. You, know, you have your auto, your audio, your phone, your like other Bluetooth settings. Uh, this vehicle does not have any navigation, which is not a huge flaw, because as I just mentioned, it has Apple CarPlay. And if you want to use that with Bluetooth, you can just pull up Waze or Maps or something and give yourself your own navigation as well. Um, for those of you who don't know, Honda Link is pretty much a phone system that you can use to hook up and reach your other contacts as well. And AHA is a different type of radio system kind of endorsed by Honda. Um, as far as like um, the tech features though go, your app list, you can download a bunch of stuff you want. You know, you have your widgets right here. You can have a photo gallery on your Civic in case you want to upload your vacation pictures and show them to your passengers as you show for them around in your Civic. Um, but overall, um, I like how Honda also equips you with this very futuristic and dark panel like you're in an intense action movie to kind of give you that overall futuristic design look of the Civic that stays throughout the entirety of the vehicle. Um, and as far as um, like responsiveness goes to uh, your touch, it's not as adaptive as say a modern Jaguar or Volvo or like a brand new Benz. However, this is also a $20,000 car to, you know, it's understandable that it doesn't have that like instantaneous adaptive touch, but nonetheless, just a very quick two second like pause time. It's very intuitive and easy to use though. So nothing wrong with that. So continuing with the overall interior of the Civic, um, as you can see, if you hit the climate control button, an entire screen pops up to you for you to change your climate control. It's very simple and like adaptive to your touch that I previously mentioned. You have your various climate controls right here as well. And then you have your defrosters right here, very standard features you'd find in any other vehicle. And just one other touch I want to make on the interior. Uh, everything is almost almost like a futuristic design, as you can see. It just kind of flows throughout the entirety of the car. And I like how the um, center console is slightly, just slightly tilted toward the driver. You can see in the sense where it kind of swoops down here and leans just slightly toward the driver, encasing you that you want to be in control of your Civic while driving. Very nice on Honda's part. So moving below to the gear shifter in the Civic, as you can see here, you have your very standard controls right here, your park, reverse, neutral drive, a sport mode, and then a low range mode as well. Right here, you can see you have your brake hold, which is becoming a pretty standard feature in most small cars. Basically how this works is if you're at a stoplight and you don't feel like physically holding your foot to the brake pad, tap this button and the car will hold the brakes for you as if you're almost parked. Right here, you have your button press parking brake instead of having the old fashioned kind of grippy one. This is becoming standard as the old physical hand brakes are becoming a thing of the past. Right here, you have two blank switches that you would probably get as a other few features. Let's say you get the touring mode or the SI or a higher trim of the Civic. Nothing, you know, 
too bad to comment on. And right here you have your econ mode. In case you want to get even more miles per gallon in your Civic, even though it averages like mid 30 miles per gallon, in case you want to strive for 40 in that excellent driving capabilities, Honda fastens you with an econ mode at your touch. So moving along with the storage on the interior of the Civic, as you can see, there are two storage panels right here, a lower one right here with a couple USB outlets to charge your phone in the back right here. And then if you move up a few feet, it's like almost like a double layer or double decker storage center for your phone kind of. As you, if you look deeply into this first pocket right here, there are two wire spots where you can run wires through. And this rubber material would keep your phone from moving while you're driving if you wanna hold it right here and let it charge down below. Now, if you had a higher trim of the Civic right here, this would probably be a wireless charging system right here, opposed to a double decker bar right here. You'd still have the storage below, but this would be wireless charging instead of just a kind of a rubbery pad. Nonetheless, though, it is a very convenient touch on Honda's part, as most companies wouldn't think to integrate a wire holding system right here for you. So moving to the center console of the Honda Civic, um, this is actually a huge center console for a small car like this, much bigger than I would have anticipated had I not known the storage size. And this center console is very configurable as well to whatever you want to store. As you can see here, you have a sliding cup holder, dual cup holders right here that are also removable. It's very simple to remove. All you do is press this little latch right here. Don't be klutzy like me, and you can remove it like so. There are two panels right here where you can keep it on a lower storage rack or an upper one as well, depending on where you want to put your cup holders. And if you move below, this is an extremely deep center console. I'll like practically out half my arm in this thing. As you can see here, you have a third cup holder in case you have a large cup that you want to store for a beverage. You have another little USB outlet right here. And then still down here, you have a massive storage panel. And to the right of this, you have another sliding little, kind of like a tray in case you want to put something small like coins or something that's very small here. Now, if you put the cup holders back in, you can do that as well. And as you can see here, you have a moving armrest right here in case you want to kind of fasten this here while you're driving and kind of lean your arm on the center console uh, rest, or you can push it back like so. Very configurable console and deep in case you want to even put maybe like, like a laptop or an iPad in here, which you could probably do is how deep this thing truly is. So one other futuristic touch that I want to uh, commend Honda for adding in the Civic, I like the uh, overall this camera usage they have in this uh, vehicle. So I'm gonna start right here. You put the vehicle in reverse and your backup camera jumps right at the screen right here. And you have three different modes you can look at. You have your standard mode right here, kind of a lower view right here. And if you hit the third one, it is a direct drop shot of your view. Now, put it back in park. One other camera setting that's very, very safe and useful in this vehicle is you turn on the right blinker and your blind spot camera will pop up automatically for you, which is very handy in case you're merging onto a highway. This is a great safety feature on Honda's part. And then one other cool feature as far as cameras go in this vehicle, if you move to the turn signal dial, there is a little um, camera button right here for your blind spot, push it inward, and the same camera will appear on your center console to alert you in case there's someone coming in your blind spot. Very nice safety features on Honda's part. And one subtle interior design part that I just enjoy for some reason that I'm gonna point out for you. I really like this material that they use on the interior. It's almost like a mosaic-y, like chrome kind of plasticky lining. It just, it's a very subtle touch on Honda's part, but I just like the way it feels. And it adds a very nice, like, kind of contrasting design to this dark plastic, a very chrome bright lining. A cool little touch on Honda's part. And one other touch on the Honda Civic EX Edition. The EX is not the lowest trim. It's not the highest trim either, but it's a step above the lowest trim. But Honda wants to reward you for buying the EX package and fastens you with a sunroof. As any other vehicle, it's very simple to use. Hit a touch of a button, you can open the sunroof. It's very generic, as you can, you know, expect. But... A nice little touch on Honda's part, as most people enjoy a sunroof in the nicer weather months, such as June. As far as seats go in the Civic, I want to point out the overall design of the uh, seats in the interior. As you can see here, you have like, almost like a checkered flag, almost like a racing look type to your cloth seats right here. And those of these seats are not the optimal leather that you would expect or find in a high-class luxury sedan. It is a very spongy and soft um, cloth material right here. As you can see, my hands kind of sink in. It is a very comfortable, kind of like a sleek like cloth design. 
The only flaw about these seats that I am not a fan of is that it is a manual seat. However, this is a very practical and low priced car and you're not gonna be expecting it every single bell and whistle in a Honda Civic. And moving to the rear of the Civic EX, um, the legroom in this vehicle is pretty strong actually. I'm about five foot 10. Um, the seat is pushed back pretty far. I still have a pretty solid amount of legroom back here actually. And it's very comfortable. It has the same cloth seats as it has up front, which it should. As you can see, um, the racing quality, almost checkered pattern from the front seats, almost follow and flow back into this one as well. Um, as far as anything else, though, in the rear, you know, you have um, a basic cup holder right here, you know, your window controls, and a tiny little storage panel right here for, like, coins or something. And the only other, like, somewhat interesting feature back here is the center rear console. Two cup holders back here. And if you move into the trunk of the vehicle, you can put these seats down, simply pull them forward, and you'll have a little bit more storage in your uh, Civic. One other last touch that I want to mention back here is the little blind spot uh, window right there. As you can see, this vehicle has huge rear pillars to add to the um, exterior design of this vehicle. And this little window on either side of the Civic almost enhances the overall visibility in this car, which is a very nice, helpful feature on Honda's part. Moving to the rear trunk space on the Civic, um, this vehicle actually has a very, very big trunk that you wouldn't really expect in a small compact car like the Civic is. However, you can see how deep this thing really, really is. It's got a huge trunk space, two little storage panels on either side for a little bit of extra room. And if you want to move the, uh, the rear seats, then all you have to do is pull out this lever and go to the front, and then you can simply push the, uh, the rear seats down for a little bit of extra storage in case you need it in the trunk of your Civic. So getting behind the wheel of the 2016 Honda Civic EX, first thing you notice, this thing's got some pep to it. You know, barely put your foot to the ground and I'm hitting 40 almost instantly. I really like this digital gauge cluster right too, like seeing your speedometer like adaptive it like instantly to your touch. Um, I like how it just has like the, uh, the digital readout opposed to the old like old fashioned like kind of gauge speedometer. It's a subtle touch, but I think it's like pretty cool. This car though is very simple and easy to handle. It's light, it's comfortable, and you just feel in control. You know, Honda, it, they do a good job. They know that, you know, nearly half a million people or about a third of a million people will be buying this car on a yearly basis. And Honda wants to equip someone with a very simple, easy driving experience. And they succeed in that like mightily. You know, I'm just cruising down a straight line right here and it just, it's rolling, it's not sluggish, it's got pep. You know, it's not speedy like a fancy, like exotic German sports car or anything, but you know, it's got some pep to it because it's a small four cylinder car with good acceleration. It's got good fuel economy. And like, it's it's very adaptive and like easy to handle. You know, like the braking's light, the, the pedal's light, you know, you don't get that heavy feeling. It's it's a small car too, so you, know, you anticipate all this stuff. And visibility is very strong in this vehicle. Yeah, it is a small vehicle, like I said, but you know, you have the various camera settings, you have the good blind spot uh, mirrors and windows and stuff. And you know, Honda equips you to make sure you're comfortable in your car, which is all you gotta ask for. Is and uh, like, Honda knows too that like, you know, some people like the sporty Civics, you know, you can buy a Type R and SI or, you know, any type like that. But then the other people that buy Civics are, you know, non-car enthusiasts. They just want a simple practical car that can get them from point A to point B, you know, and Honda Fast is all, all that you need for to achieve this. So we're gonna test the turning radius of this vehicle right here. Yeah, it's a very simple and light vehicle to turn. You know, you don't have any heavy feeling as it should. It doesn't just previously mentioned say light car. Um, as far as comfort wise, cloth seats kind of, you know, hold you pretty comfortably. You know, like I said, they're not as like cushy as like a big monstrous SUV with like plush leather seats. However, the cloth, uh, the cloth seats are pretty comfortable. And like I said, it's like a kind of like a sleek material, almost like a not your standard like old fashioned like rocky Honda cloth. I like one thing I want to mention as far as comfort wise and the Accord that I reviewed in my dad's Odyssey and even my mom's old Pilot, Honda's seats were very firm and like um, kind of like just solid. This one is much more soft and cushiony than that, which I kind of want to commend Honda for, for making a bit of a more comfortable ride in case you're going on a long extensive road trip or anything in this vehicle. But overall, just in general, you know, I love how just easy and simple to handle this car truly is. You know, it just, it's just a nice, fun little, like, easy car to drive. You know, you're not going to fear, you know, getting too overboard with as far as speed or power. And it just, it's nice to just kind of whip around the back road and just go cruising in. So, cool. It is now time for the interview section, which I answer six generic questions I'm going to ask when I'm going to purchase a vehicle. Question number one is, do I like the Civic? And the answer is yes. Civic is a simple, practical car that is pretty appealing to most people. So, yes, I do like the Civic. 
question number two is what is my favorite part about the Civic? And I really like the rear design taillights. I kind of look like lobster claws or old telephones. So that's a cool little feature. So that'd be my favorite part about the Civic. Question number three is what is my least favorite part about the Honda Civic? That would have to be the blank switches. One of my biggest pet peeves in cars is blank switches and the Honda Civic EX has a ton of them, being that it is the EX edition. So that is my least favorite part about the Civic. Question number four of the interview section is what is the oddest part about the Honda Civic? And that would be the uh, overall diversity and kind of maneuverability of the center console. This thing is a huge center console with a lot of ways to maneuver it, so that would have to be the weirdest part on the Civic. Question number five of the interview section is, is the Civic worth its value? And the answer is an easy yes. The Civic is an extremely practical car as a daily driver for most Americans, and it will last you a decade as long as you keep um, with maintenance up. So yes, a Civic is worth its value. And question number six of the interview section is would I ever want slash own the Honda Civic? And the answer is no. Um, though the Civic is a good car and I do like it, I am not a sedan person or a compact person, I should say. Now that we've evaluated the Civic's convenient qualities and characteristics, it is now time to see where it falls in the limitless evaluation scale. Before I begin, I would like to thank my friend Anthony for lending me a Civic for the production of this video, as well as my friend Omer for helping me edit this video. Now on with the scoring. Starting with exterior, the Civic is an average looking sedan, but Honda spruced it up nicely for the 10th generation and earns a 6 out of 10. Interior is rather basic, the screen is a nice integration, but the rest is all your typical plastic and earns a 5 out of 10. Road trip on the Civic is also mediocre. As far as cloth seats, the Civic is comfortable, however it is incomparable to the, lus the luscious leather seats of luxury vehicles, earning a decent 5 out of 10. MPG on the Civic is strong, as this is a lightweight compact car that averages an impressive 36 miles per gallon earning an 8 out of 10 for the MPG scale. Storage on the Civic is decent for its class, however it is a, still a smaller compact that is unable to compete with the likes of a full-size truck or SUV, earning a 4 out of 10 for storage. Character on the Civic is poor, as these are the most abundant vehicle you will see on the road. However, for its notoriety, I'll be generous and give the Civic a 2 out of 10. Had this been a Type R or something of the nature, it would have been scored high, higher in this category. Worship on the Civic is also strong, and this is a modern car with little to wish for aside from manual seats and navigation, earning an 8 out of 10. As far as handling, the Civic's light frame is maneuverable and easy to operate, however it lacks the sharpness of German exotics and earns a 6 out of 10. Excitement on the Civic is poor, as everyone and their mother owns one of these. If you want to question a stranger on the street and ask what type of car they own, odds are a lot will say a Honda Civic, which earns it a 1 out of 10 for excitement. Stupidity on the Civic is solid as well. It loses points for the excessive amounts of blanks, which is in quirky checkered flag patterns running to the back of the front seats. But aside from that, it's rather fine and it earns a 7 out of 10. Pricing on the Civic is nearly immaculate, as you are getting a dependable vehicle with solid tech that will last a decade as long as it's maintained. The only thing restraining me from giving it a perfect score is the lack of insane luxury features inside the sticker price. Nonetheless, the Civic earns a 9 out of 10 for price. Engine responsiveness on the Civic is decent, as it is a speedy little compact, nothing that will toss you back in your astonishment at its speed, earning a fair 6 out of 10. And overall amenities on the Civic is solid, as the tech, safety cameras, and complementary practicality of the Honda are desirable features while buying a car. Though the tech is nice, it's not totally phenomenal, and the cloth non-power seats hurt the score a little bit, still earning a respectable 7 out of 10. Add that all together, you get a grand total of 74 out of 130. Divide that by 13 categories is 5.69. As expected, the Civic falls directly in the middle of the lemon list, earning the 8th highest score among the 16 reviewed. The Civic outduels the older Accord and Passat and narrowly outdoes the 2017 Malibu for its higher quality and simplicity. However, the Civic lacks the luxurious touches and sportiness of Beamer's A4 and the Corolla hatch. Had the Civic been a higher trim, it may have been a bit of a closer margin.